I'll switch over to Willie Waffle on the movie. Uh, Willie, good morning. Hope hey, you, good morning. How's hope, it going? Hope you enjoyed the weekend. Uh, what was your take on this uh, this record breaking movie? I was actually shocked that it broke the record. I, I really was. If you look at the history of the Marvel movies over the past few releases, there seem to be diminishing returns. Uh, you know, the, the first Avengers movie came in around two hundred million. The next one came in around like one ninety. The next one came in around like one eighty. And and that all of a sudden, this is the one where they jump forward and they break what seemed to be this unattainable record by the uh, first Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens. I was shocked. Okay. Can, can I follow up on that, on the ticket sales? I, I had asked Tanya that. Why do they gauge it in dollars spent versus tickets sold? Do you know why? Well, because if they, if they really judge it by tickets sold. sold, you would know the dirty little secret, that the number of tickets being sold is going down every mm. single year. The cost is going, the cost of each ticket individually right. yeah. is going up. That's what I thought. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, tell us about the movie. What do you think? Oh, God, the movie's great. I mean, it really is. I mean, I, I think what really made it work so well is that, you know, we already know who the Avengers are. So, you know, there is that, that threat of maybe, you know, feeling like we've been there, we've done that. But what this movie does is it really breaks it up into almost three different adventures. And it's kind of like the Star Wars movies like that, where we've got one group of, of characters going off on one adventure, one group of characters going on another one, another group going on another one. And they're putting together these new combinations, these new uh, you know chemistries between characters that we hadn't seen before. That makes it feel new. It makes it feel fresh. Um, if you weren't somebody that, is, if you're not a big Marvel fan, do you do you like the movie? Well, I, I think it would be really hard yeah. not to be a Marvel fan and see this movie. I mean, let's face it. I mean, we're talking about a ten year, nineteen movie investment. At this point, you're either in or out, man. Yeah. I mean, like if, if you're deciding this is the first Marvel movie I need to see, uh, you know, I don't think this is the starter set. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they are referencing a lot of things that have happened in the other movies. The relationships that have been established were established in the other movies. I mean, you, know, you just can't be living in a log cabin out, out in the middle of the woods and walk into this one. Yeah, yeah, you will be, uh, you will be confused. Uh, well, I think you, you don't get the enjoyment out of it. I think yeah. that a lot of, of what makes this movie so good is that you see these relationships and you see these twists and turns that happen based on that, that palette of what you know and of what you remember, and it's more meaningful that way. Yeah. Uh, what, do you give the, uh, what do you give it? Oh, God, it's a four-waffle movie, without yeah. a doubt. Oh, nice. Oh, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. I mean, you know, it's, it's got that summer blockbuster feel. It's got the big action, big movie feel. But what I loved about it is it is maybe one of the most daring summer blockbusters that you can remember. I mean, anything can happen. And people who have seen the movie know what I'm talking about. Anything could happen. Mm. And so with that spirit, with that darker feel to it, I think it just makes it more complex and more interesting. So Black Panther would be one that you could see on your own, on its own, would stand on its well, own yeah. better than better than this would stand on its own. Oh, absolutely, because Black Panther, Black Panther introduces a new character. And they reference some things that happened when he was in the Captain America Civil War movie. But you know what? It stands on its own. This movie here is is the culmination of all those other movies over the years, and that that really kind of makes it why uh, I, I would imagine why you're surprised that it broke records, just because it's a little more narrow. And I think Tanya brought up the point: well, people see this movie over and over, like other Marvel movies uh, or other movies that they love. Maybe not because they might be lost through parts of it. Well, I think that you know the the hardcore Marvel fans are going to want to see it two and three times. Because there is so much that happens, and you want to take all of it in, and you want to catch those little nuances or those things you missed the first time around. The other thing it's got going for it is there's no real competition until Deadpool comes out on May 18th. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you know, wait for I mean, that what? movie. Yeah, that's right, Andrew, Andrew, that's Andrew that's... Just, just piping his thoughts in. Um, without, well, the Deadpool uh, movie is yeah. going to be really exciting. Yeah. Uh, so you that know, gives... Deadpool will be exciting, but, you know, Charlize Theron is not going to take out the Avengers this week. You know, and I don't even right. remember what's coming out next week. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Willie so, has a calendar, and it this, ended Friday. <laughs> this, this movie is basically going to have a, a good three weeks to be able to uh, to rake in the dough. 
Yeah, it really will. And, and that was partly the reason why Disney moved it up another week. You know, they wanted that extra week alone, that extra week without the competition from Deadpool. And I thought it was a really good move. You know, it's also an extra week of not competing with the Han Solo movie when that comes out Memorial Day weekend. I mean, by the time we get to kind of, by the time we get to Deadpool, everybody who wants to see this movie will have seen it. Yeah. Everybody who wants to see it two or three times will have seen it two or three times. And then Deadpool will take over. All right. Uh, so we're just around the corner from the big summer blockbusters. And this one really kind of fits that uh, uh, fits that description a little bit. So not bad. All right. It's WaffleMovies.com. Willie, I appreciate you doing Monday morning for us, uh, especially with this movie. And we'll talk again Friday morning. Hey, we'll talk to you Friday morning. Right. Oh, about that Charlize Theron movie, Tully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that movie. Right, that's still out. We can even talk about Avengers <laughs> I'm all so over excited again. about that. Didn't she have to gain all this weight for the movie? She did. She looks like a normal human being. I yeah. don't know how she can handle <laughs> yeah. it. When you, see, when you see her fat picture, it's like, really? That's fat? Right, okay. exactly. And that's one of the biggest problems. I mean, this... This is something that came up with that Amy Schumer movie uh, a couple weeks ago. You know, she's supposed to be this fat, ugly woman. She looks normal. Yeah, yeah, she looks normal. <laughs> All right, Willie, we'll talk to you Friday. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. WaffleMovies.com, and we'll talk again. Thanks.